Hello world, I'm Daryl from MakeCode, and today we're going to learn how to ramp up the difficulty in our game. So I'm starting from the end of the health bar video. I'll link to that down in the description. But basically, we have a simple space shooter game where we've added um, health to enemies. So you can shoot bullets or lasers from your ship at enemies, and they take quite a few hits to take uh, down. And if they run into you, you lose a life. Um, so this game got harder when we added health to enemies, but it's still uh, quite easy. And so I think what we want to do is ramp up the difficulty over time. So obviously, there's many different ways to uh, change the difficulty in a game. And in a space shooter like that, uh, some of the ways you might do it are have the enemies get more and more health, uh, have special types of enemies with maybe special types of attacks that are harder to avoid, uh, have the enemies come at you faster and faster, or more and more of them. Uh, there's lots of different things uh, we could do. So I think to start, I'm going to make the enemies uh, move faster and faster over time. To do that, I'm going to go to the on start area in our code, and I'm going to introduce a new variable that is the enemy speed. So this enemy speed is going to start at uh, 20. So that's sort of the speed they're moving at now. That's going to be pixels uh, per second. And um, so we now have this variable enemy speed. Let's go use it. So where we create the enemies is here in this on game update. You can see we're setting their velocity to negative 20. So instead, I want to set them uh, to that enemy speed. Now, the enemy speed I set as a positive number. So what you're going to see here is the ships moving off the screen in the wrong direction. So I need to go to the math category, drag out the minus block, and put the enemy speed inside of that. And this is going to be zero minus enemy speed or negative enemy speed. Great. So now the enemies are coming at me, but they're always coming uh, at a uh, the same speed. So we're not changing the enemy speed yet. So I'm going to go into on game update and drag out another um, uh, on game update block from the game category. And this time I'm going to say every five seconds, I want the enemy speed to increase. So I'm going to go to the variable category and say change enemy speed. And let's change it by 10 every five seconds. So let's see if we can notice this. All right. So these are moving at a speed of 20. And in a few seconds, you can see this guy is actually moving faster uh, than the one before it. It's sort of catching up to the one before it. Uh, and they're all going faster. And then that one's even faster now. And so yeah, the enemies are ramping up in speed. That makes them harder to dodge, harder to take down uh, in the time that you have um, before, uh, you know, the enemy moves across screen. So that is making the enemies uh, quite a bit harder. So I waited a few seconds and you can see uh, how much, how fast the enemies are kind of moving across the screen. All right, so change uh, is very useful, but I think we want to also add a maximum speed to our enemies. Otherwise, they are going to just be going too fast uh, for us to ever be able to take them down. So to do that, I'm going to go to the variable category and I'm going to say set enemy speed. And then I'm going to go to the math category. And I'm going to say, uh, set the enemy speed to the minimum of uh, the current enemy speed and um, the maximum value we ever want the speed to be. So I'm going to say the maximum we ever want the speed to be is 50. So even though this is saying minimum, uh, this is going to effectively set a maximum of 50 for the enemy speed, right? So if the enemy speed increases above 50 to like 80, let's say, then this line of code will set it to the minimum of 80 or 50. Therefore, it sets it down to 50. So now we'll never see enemies uh, be going too fast. So this is uh, known as clamping, and it's a very useful technique um, for you know variables you might want to change but keep within a certain range. You can use a similar tr trick to set a minimum value of something. So now that we have enemies moving faster across our screen, let's also change the way enemies spawn so that uh, they spawn faster and faster. Because as it is, um, due to the way enemies are moving faster and faster, you'll actually get fewer and fewer 
of them on the screen at any one point in time. And uh, we'll use a similar technique uh, to how we did the enemy speed. So I'm going to go to the variables category and create a new variable called enemy spawn time. So this is going to be the amount of time between when enemy spawn. And this starts out to uh, two seconds, 200, um, 2000 milliseconds. And so that's uh, this, this property right here. So this is what governs uh, our enemy creation. And what you might be thinking is that we can just take this variable and drop it in here. And then you would say on game update every uh, enemy spawn time, you know, spawn an enemy. However, this isn't going to work. Um, the reason why is event blocks, the condition is registered once at the start of the game. And if that doesn't make sense, uh, that's okay. So if we want to uh, change the frequency at which certain code runs, uh, with a variable, we actually need to go to the loops category and use a forever block and a pause block. So the pause block is going to let us um, pause for the amount of time between spawns. So I'm going to drag this enemy spawn time into the pause block, and then I'm going to drag all the rest of this code into the forever block. So there's a lot of similarities between the forever block and the on game update. And don't worry too much about the differences now. There will be other videos uh, that cover that more in depth later. However, just know that if you want to change the interval at which certain code runs, you'll need to use a forever and a pause block. All right, so now we have uh, the enemy spawn time based on this variable, but we're not changing the variable yet. Let's go over to this location where we're changing the speed. And here is a natural place to change the enemy spawn time as well. And, and in this case, we're going to decrease the amount of time. So let's say we decrease the amount of time between spawns by 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And again, we're going to want to uh, clamp the enemy spawn time. But this time, uh, since we're decreasing the value, we want to clamp it to a maximum of the enemy spawn time and a, uh, and a certain value. So I don't think we ever want them to spawn faster than uh, once every uh, half second. All right, so now we've got uh, enemies uh, spawning and they're moving faster and faster over time and they're also spawning faster and faster over time. I don't know if you can already tell, but yeah, they're definitely spawning a lot faster as time goes on. So I think both of these factors are increasing too rapidly. So I'm going to reduce the amount we change these variables by about half. Let's do five and negative 200. All right, so that I think has made our game uh, a fair bit more difficult. And even though this is a space shooter game, the same technique can apply to most other games. Changing the properties of the obstacles or enemies in your game over time is a great way to increase the difficulty. Thanks for watching. I'm Daryl from Make Code.